All right, my name is Captain Irving, and you're in F Troop. Now, oh, kitty. Something really weird is happening. One of our soldiers is in the guardhouse, and he's in big trouble. Now, until I finish a full and penetrating investigation of this shocking breach of conduct and make my report to the Inspector General, you, Sergeant, will, you, you, soldier, will remain in the guardhouse. We're doing a little spoof here. While this show was running, another show called Branded was in its second season. The show starred Chuck Connors as Jason McCord, a disgraced army officer, and it always began with him being busted like this. The scene would end with the commander breaking McCord's sword and McCord looking at his half-sword. Except O'Rourke wasn't an officer, so he didn't have a sword. The real question is why? Did the captain finally find out about O'Rourke Enterprises? We'll soon know because we're going to watch the story unfold as the captain writes it down in a letter to the IG. To think you would betray the trust I had in you for a mere hundred dollars. Oh, offer him the right deal and he'll do it for a lot less than that. I mean, what did he do? On the morning of the 11th, the Reveille formation was being held in the normal manner. All right, look alive. Here comes your captain. <laughs> Everything was going smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that horse is moving very smoothly. Then what happened? <laughs> well, in closing... Charge! Oh! <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Sergeant? Corporal? Get that man out of that uniform and off this post. That's Charlie, the town drunk, but he doesn't usually try to wear an army uniform. What's the deal? Oh, that's my daughter Cindy. She's been going to school back in the East. Grades are that bad? <laughs> no, she's on her way to San Francisco to be a school marm. And she's passing through here on tomorrow's stage just to see me. So? Well... Now she's going to find out that I'm in lying to her in my letter. He told her he's in the Army, and he's not just assigned to Fort Courage. He's the captain who runs it. He doesn't want her to know he's just the town drunk. He'd like his daughter to be proud of him. Charlie, as a father of daughters myself, I know exactly how you feel. But you don't gain your children's respect by lying to them. In your case, you do well to tell her you're an alcoholic, or since it's the 1870s and we haven't really popularized that word yet, tell her you're a drunk and you want to change. Ask for her help. Want to make her proud of you? Turn your life around and let her be part of the process. You'll grow closer than you ever imagined and she will be your best friend. But you gotta be honest. Unfortunately, he brought his problem to O'Rourke. Being honest isn't his first instinct. And we, we gotta help him. Do you wanna dress that in a captain's uniform and try to pass it off for the real thing in front of his daughter? <laughs> Sarge, that's a wonderful ID. Then he could review the troops in front of his dear little daughter. And what are we gonna tell the captain? Would you tell me that impersonating an officer a very serious charge? You could do it, Sarge. Sure wouldn't be easy, though. Ah, it would be a cinch if I put my mind to it. But he won't do it because there's nothing in it for him. While he's off doing something else, Agarn gets an idea. Bet him a hundred he can't do it. Can't do what? <laughs> I'll give you the money. Bet him he can't fool the captain and let Charlie review the troops. Ah, suddenly the captain's comment makes sense. O'Rourke is sometimes an easy mark himself, so he takes the bet. Step one, sober him up. They'll enlist the help of the Hakawis with that. They know the three-step cure. Spirit of water, hold head on the waterfall. Spirit of forest, walk through woods till he can stand on feet. Spirit of fire, put fire on the coffee, get hot. Pour down trunk. Dunk him in the water, walk him around until he's sober, and pour coffee down him. But in a spiritual manner, I guess. On the afternoon of the 12th, Sergeant O'Rourke, through flattery, which I recognized immediately, <laughs> made a futile attempt to deceive me. 
O'Rourke is taking the full rap for all of this. He told the captain it was all his idea and his doing and nobody else should be punished. He may be a master finagler with somewhat questionable ethics, but he's loyal to a fault. The captain continues writing, explaining that O'Rourke managed to draw Private Dobbs into his scheme with a well-placed lie. He said if Dobbs blows one clinker on that bugle tomorrow, he is through. Captain said that? Eh, uh, well, don't worry about it, Dobbs. I mean, it's not the end. Just probably get transferred to another post. But, Sarge, I like it here. O'Rourke says if the captain didn't show up for retreat, problem solved. Dobbs is desperate. He says, what do I do? Now that we got his lunch on court, let's go find somebody to pour his dinner. <laughs> Furthermore, the captain writes, he also duped a local civilian into helping him. I tell you, Wrangler, we're going to lose Captain Parmenter if we don't all three stick together. If he meets that stage tomorrow, he's a god. Right. But who is she? His childhood sweetheart, that's who. And her letters are perfumed, all 50 of them. Yeah. Naturally, Jane says, I'll take care of this. Just tell me what you want me to do. Ain't nobody taking Wilton away from her. Here's my real treat. This here is juniper berry juice. Oh. <laughs> I have not been able to determine what it was that induced the illness, but one could assume that it was some little known liquid perhaps of Indian origin. It caused a blurring of vision and a noticeable unsteadiness of the hands. The word you're looking for is alcohol, most likely whiskey. But you're right about one thing, the Hakawis probably distilled it. No, no, it's all right, nurse. I, I assure you I won't tire the patient. Oh, well. Nurse. Nurse? Oh, <laughs> nurse? Sergeant? Where am I? O'Rourke says, you passed out from something called the sagebrush shakes. Agarn and I brought you here in a buckboard. You're in a hospital in Dodge City, and it's time for your medicine. Oh, that's strange. That tastes just like that juniper berry juice of Janie's. Before he can ponder that much more, he's unconscious again. Captain like his little white room? Ah, sleeping like a baby. Hope you got that hundred dollars ready. <laughs> Day ain't over yet. <laughs> or maybe it is. They got Charlie fitted with a uniform, and Agarn was supposed to watch him and make sure he didn't drink. I'm not sure he was successful. They'll have to put him through the three spirits all over and get it done before the stage gets here. Confident in the outcome, the sergeant actually met the imposter's daughter and led her to believe that her father was the dear Inspector General. Oh, that her father was the commanding officer of Fort Courage. She has no reason not to believe him. First order of business, introduce her to the town drunk. I rose from bed and walked briskly out into the street, determined to get to the bottom of the matter. That was the same series of pratfalls that Charlie usually does. Isn't it nice to learn new skills? Oh, your hats. Yeah, just, just. Sergeant, what's going on here? And why did you tell me I was in Dodge City when all the time I was right here in town in the back of the saloon? Well, now, the, the fact is, sir. The fact is, Sergeant, that you told a lie and I can prove it. That saloon isn't in Dodge City. Anybody can see that. It's time to come clean. And that's the whole story, sir. <laughs> that is the most incredible thing I've ever heard of. Sergeant, I'm returning to the fort. Report to me in my quarters immediately. Yes. O'Rourke promised Cindy that her dad would be at retreat without fail. So now what? <laughs> Did anybody else notice the new private standing next to Dobbs? Now, fully aware of this attempt to deceive me, I took the proper steps to protect the reputation of the fort and of the troop. You got a button missing there, Private. Sorry, sir. Get it back on there, soldier. That is an order. Yes, sir. You knew the captain wasn't going to let Charlie be humiliated in front of his daughter. Something wrong, Corporal? Oh, sir, bust me. Take my stripes. I'm as guilty as he is. Oh, I find that hard to believe, Corporal. Oh, Cap, I can't stand it. I demand to be punished. 
Sergeant O'Rourke's own confession specifically states that he and he alone conceived this entire plot in an effort to win a $100 bet. Now, that sort of leaves you out of it, doesn't it? Agarn says, I put him up to it and gave the bartender the money. The captain says, doesn't matter. And I'm confiscating the $100 because he's not going to profit from this scheme in any way. Agarn says, you can't do that. But Captain, he ain't got it. Oh, didn't the bartender pay him? Well, sure, but the Sarge gave the money to Charlie so his daughter would have money to buy school books for the kids. Are you sure about that? Yes, Captain. And he also told Charlie not one cent for booze or he'd run him out of town. Needless to say, the captain says, go let the sergeant out of the guardhouse. Dear Inspector General, all is well at Fort Courage. Well, almost all is well. Charlie's back in the saloon. I'd be obliged to you for some of that spirit of fire I've been drinking lately. One coffee coming up. Yeah, that's the ticket, Charlie. You stick with that and you won't be tangling with them swinging doors no more. He can't find the words to thank them for everything they've done. Not only is his daughter proud of him, he's sober and on his way to a better life. I believe that's the last time we'll see Charlie, and that's not even the same Charlie. The first three appearances of Our Town Drunk were played by Harvey Perry, a stuntman that I've talked about before. This was Frank McHugh, a well-known movie actor who had been under contract with Warner Brothers to play just these sorts of parts since around 1930. He usually provided comedy relief, whereas here he's the tragic figure that you just have to try and help because your conscience will haunt you forever if you don't. And since this is a sitcom, it turns out well. Anyway, I thank you, and so long. Just mark that down with the rest of them, gentlemen. <laughs> On the other hand, that may be genetic. If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.